Alright, so there are two ways to go about this one. The first one is using widget blueprints and the second one is using post-process materials. So I'm going to show both. Let's start off with our widget blueprints. So to do that, just right click anywhere, user interface, widget blueprint. You can see we have two options. Uh, I'm just going to be using the user widget one. Okay, so in here, the first thing we need is a canvas. You can see here in the left, we have our widgets. And if we place a canvas, now I can place any, any of the other widgets widgets and freely move them. So I can place an image, which I've just deleted for some reason. And here in the brush, I can select a picture actually. So I can select that, do whatever I want with that. We can't actually animate anything inside of here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my content drawer again. And here I'm going to right click and create a new material. So we're making a material. So the first thing we need is in here. This is our main material where we're going to be connecting all of our nodes in here. If you go down here, you can see in the material domain, we have a we have it set to surface, which is a default. So we can apply that to surfaces. Obviously, we can change it to user interface. Now, right off the bat, you're going to see that now we have very few options. We have the final color and then the screen position. So what I can do now is I'm going to pr uh, right click and I can either search for a texture here like this texture sample where I can just press T left click which will bring a texture sample node and in here I can specify a texture you can bring in a custom image but for now I, th I think this grenade one is good enough I'm gonna plug that in and I'm going to save and now back in my blueprint what I can do is I can grab this material and because it's set to UI domain I can now just drag that and you can see now we have a white square. What? But we put a grenade. Why is the grenade icon not working? As you can see here, this texture has some transparent uh, back, but to use a transparent background, that inf information is stored within the alpha channel. So what we need to do here is enable this opacity. So we would plug that in here, but you can see the opacity thing is blurred out for some reason. Click on this. And then in here, we change the blend mode from opaque to translucent. And you can see that now we have our little grenade. Okay, so the first thing is I I have this green position node. What that's going to allow me to do is change the position of my texture or whatever is in here. So I'm going to right click and search for a world position node. From here, I'm going to grab this and search for mask node one. And then if you can see here, I can plug that in straight into screen position. We haven't done anything, which is why this thing hasn't changed. But if we grab an add node here, you can see that now that's because this needs to be something higher, like maybe a hundred. Now you can see that has shifted. And you can see that even though I have this thing set here, my actual texture is down here. That's because we've shifted the UI coordinates down there by a hundred centimeters. Just note that world position uses centimeters. So that's why we I have to put a hundred here. And that's why one didn't really work. We're saying that's cool, but that's still not animated. Well, what we can do is we can periodically or just change this B value. So you can see here that that this has a node which we can plug something in here so i'm just going to grab a sign node which just gets the sign function and for the input i'm going to grab a time node and when i pass that in here and in here you're going to see that now well this is still well this sign is only between negative one and one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply this by let's say a hundred now whoa that's moving back and forth so i'm going to apply that save and if we go into our blueprint, you can see that is also moving back and forth. So let's say that's my animation and that's what I want to show to my dear viewers or players. If we go back into our editor and I'm going to grab a HUD message device and in here. So normally when I select this little thing, our widget is going to appear here. But at the moment, this is bugged for some reason to get around this. We just simply go into our content drawer and then head wherever you're, you made your HUD widget. So in my case, this one just select it and then in here just click this little arrow thing and, and you can see here that now our blueprint is shown this just selects whatever you've selected in the content drawer okay so i've set it so when i press this button hey we can see our little grenade is moving back and forth you're saying wow i've made animated uis well here's the issue with this one let me actually go into my settings so here we go hud scale i'm gonna turn this down to 25 percent i'm crazy what and if i press this again Oh, look at that. It didn't show up. Wait, it's down there. Why is that? That's because the problem with this HUD message device method is that the widget blueprint will scale with your... If I make this 125 and then I go in here, you can see that now my 
little icon up there is clipping up there so if you wanted to make sort of like a heart system or maybe a and an inventory or something that could sort of clip out of bounds. Okay, so how do we fix that? That brings us to our second method, a post-processing material. So to get started, let's go up here into the actors panel and I'm gonna get a volume post-process volume. If you don't know what these do, they just can basically apply things like exposure station or you can change the saturation. But for our purposes, we're gonna be using this. You can see here we have a post-process material and if we add an element, we can then choose an asset reference. And now we can choose a custom material. Now, one important thing is that by default, only when we're inside of this post process material, we're going to see the effects. So just check this infinite extent unbound. So that way, even if we're outside, we're always going to be getting the effect of this post process material. So firstly, let me go in here and I'm going to make a new material. Okay, so we're in here and here we can see the same normal deep thing. We go to the same process here. Instead of changing the material domain from user interface, we change it to you guess it post process. And again, we have, we're left with very limited options, namely only the emissive color here. So I'm going to grab a texture again. I'm going to grab an icon now let me grab what else, number three and plug that in you can see that again we don't have the opacity to set that it's a little more tricky because this thing is blurred out or grayed out so we have to go down here and you can see we have this output alpha the setting in the post-process material just check that that we now have the our opacity thing here so if you connect that you can see well we still don't see anything that's because we have to press this again and then change the blend mode from opaque to translucent and now we have our big old three i'm just gonna apply that real quick and then what we can do is go back into our post process material here and in the post process materials here we can choose our post process and hey we look at that we have a big old three okay well now you're saying well okay how do i animate stuff here with the other one we have the screen position with this one we don't have that same luxury so with this we're going to be manipulating the uvs here which sort of say where the texture is out and i'm not going to go too in depth because this would then it would be a material tutorial which i think is for another video before that actually what i want to do is i'm going to grab this and let's make this flash different colors so i'm going to multiply this i'm going to press three left click to bring a vector three i'm going to change this to i don't know let's say pink and put that there and now we can grab the output of this multiply and you can see now our thing is pink if we apply that pink so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into my content drawer and in this functions tab, which you can find in the epics folder. So if we minimize everything or collapse everything, you can see we have the our content, our Fortnite and our epic. We go into materials and functions. We have a bunch of functions which we can use with materials. The one I want is a hue shift. So I'm going to have a hue shift like that. I'm, for the texture, I'm going to plug this in. And for the hue shift percentage, I'm just going to get a time node, plug that in there. And then the result is going to be multiplied by our texture. You can see, whoa, like that. And wow, you can see that now that's doing that. So that's a cool thing you can do there. Now to actually get our thing to move around in screen, we need to manipulate the UVs. So firstly, I'm going to grab a texture coordinate node. So type in coordinate texture coordinate that and then what we can do here is we can just plug that in nothing's gonna happen or we can add like we did with the previous one but this time we're not using world coordinates so this time we're adding values between zero and one where one would be the entire screen so i'm gonna add 0 0.5 which should shift our thing to the left by 0 0.5 in case i'm going to do 0 0.2 and i'm going to put this output here and you can see whoa that has moved to the top left corner but now there's these other two what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this smaller by grabbing a multiply node and multiply just makes the texture smaller so i'm going to multiply this by five and you can see oh my god there's many more what is happening i only want one texture but what you can do to fix this is you can go in here and you can change the sampler source from texture asset to clamp which will make it so that there's only one instance of our thing. But now our original texture is out of balance. So I'm going to get rid of this and plug that in. You can see our multiply or sorry, our three is up there in the top left. Or if I apply top left corner. So now I'm going to show you something really fun. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab this and grab a mask node. I'm going to have actually two mask nodes. So mask, if you recall, what that does is you can extract individual components from this. This is a vector which returns an X and a Y, which would correspond to R and G. 
right here we're grabbing both of the values but here i just want the x so i'm gonna grab the x which would be r and here i want the y which we which would be the second one which would be g of course so i'm gonna get rid of that that allows me to do is now i can potentially add and this addition is only is only going to apply to this x which is the r here so i'm gonna add let's say uh, 0.2 and then these are individual components but if we try to plug one into each you can see that kind of sort of explodes because we need a vector 2 in here so what we, we can do is grab this and get an append node which is going to join two components into a single vector grab this grab that and you can see now we've shifted only the x coordinate so if i change the value here you can see that was only the x component now I'm going to do something similar here. I'm going to get an add node and then grab, put this into an append. So let's say I wanted to animate this whenever something happens. So whenever a player reaches a destination or triggers a button, whenever an event happens. To do that, we can go into our content drawer. I'm going to make a material, a material parameter collection, which as its name implies, we can have custom parameters. So I'm going to call this movement or translation or something. And see here, when we open this, there's not too many options here. We just have scalar parameters, which are just a single value, or we have vector parameters, which is a collection of values specifically for RGB and A. Right now, I think I'm going to just use stick to my scalar parameters. So I'm going to put, I don't know, X translation. I think it's simpler instead of using the vector for now. So I'm just going to stick with this and then get another one. And I'm going to call this Y translation default value. I'm just going to leave it at zero and we're going to save. So what that allows me to do is now in my materials, I can right click and get a collection parameter node. And now you can see here, I can specify my material parameter collection, which is movement, the one we've just made. And in my parameter name, I can choose from the different parameters I have. So my X translation, for example, and now whenever I grab the output of this node, it's going to correspond to whatever I have here in the X translation. So for the, so I'm going to create another one which as you can probably tell, I'm going to set this one to the Y translation. That way this will output the Y and I'm going to, and I'm going to connect this to the add node. And same here, I am going to connect this one to the add node. That way I can control my X and my Y offsets using these two parameter nodes. So how do I actually control them? Well, we do that by creating a cinematic level sequence. And you'll notice that if I go into the add track panel here, I can add a material parameter collection track. So if I add one of these and then I press C plus, I can add my X translation and I can expand this. And you can see that now if I put this here and set this to, I don't know, one like that, you can see here that we start at zero. So nothing's changed. And as we play our sequence, well, that's shifting left. Oh, isn't that cool? And we could also do that with our Y translation. So if I wanted, I could move this like here. So this would move like this bottom left. You see and now that moves. And what's cool is obviously this is a sequence. So we can put a put this into a cinematic sequence. So I'm going to grab a cinematic sequence like this. And then in here, I'm going to grab a my move three. Oh, hey, we're back in the game. And if I press this button, you can see, whoa, that's moving around and until my sequence and now a benefit is that if I go into my settings and I'm going to change this to 25%, you can see that, oh, my three is still the exact same size and the exact same position. And if I press this, it moves just how it would normally in my normal cut. So that's the biggest benefit to the post process. So one last thing I want you guys to know is that if you go in this, if you click on this, you can actually add multiple materials and they will stack on top of each other. So that way you can have multiple pictures scattered around and have different things move around using different sequences. Anyway, that's pretty much it. This is just a basic tutorial because the rest lies within you. If you know how to use materials, then you're good to make whatever you want. I don't know, you can make a 2D game or whatever. Anyway, as always, I hope this was helpful and yeah.